What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is featuring one of Apple's short-lived Apple Emacs, the Mac designed in the early to mid 2000s and sold exclusively to those in the education market. If you haven't noticed yet, the Emac was a G4 spin-off of the iMac G3's design, but without translucent plastic, integrated handle, and sold exclusively in white. Now in 2002, when the Emac was released, Apple had already begun transitioning to flat panel displays with the iMac G4, making this Apple's final CRT all-in-one design. Now this machine I was able to source locally from a former school teacher who was giving it away and she had told me that this machine has not been powered on in many, many years. It has never been upgraded, it has never been open, so we're going to be doing that for the first time here. Uh, but taking a look at how it looked before I got it, or before I was able to clean it up, it had many scuffs, a lot of dirt, a whole lot of dust, especially in the rear, where this machine actually has a vent that was obviously very caked with dust. But starting out, all we're going to do is go ahead and wipe down the external side of the machine with some isopropyl alcohol and a wash rag, which actually did a great job at getting rid of a lot of those dust marks. Uh, scuffs and dirt from the outside, but we're still going to go ahead and place it face down on a bath towel and remove the hex screw so we can go ahead and get inside. Now getting inside the back of this machine is actually very easy. Once you remove those screws, you can gently lift up and disconnect the little connector for the power button. And taking a look inside, we will find at least 15 years worth of fun-filled dust buildup as well as a fan, which the iMac G3 did not have a fan inside, but the G4 line introduced having a little fan in there because I guess the G4 processor was getting quite a bit hot, I would imagine, with all the power it was packing in there. And just using a low suction vacuum cleaner with a brush attachment, I was able to go around the internals of the unit and just gently brush off the dust and suck it up, uh, which ended up doing a really great job, but I still wanted to go ahead and remove these screws to pull out the fan and actually get in there and clean the fan blades. And what's cool about this fan is you see it has little rubber bushings uh, and that's for vibration and noise. They wanted to try to minimize that as much as possible. But taking a look at the fan blades, you can see there's many years of caked up dust. And for the back cover, I did not use a leaf blower this time, but I did utilize a bathtub, making sure to uh, tape off the inside of that power button so it didn't get damaged. But this proved to be a really good way to get the back of that vent and get all that cake dust out. Now, obviously I don't recommend doing this. Do it at your own risk. It worked for me. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this back panel cover and this is where you would also upgrade your RAM on this machine and replace your PRAM battery. We're going to go ahead and pull away the metal EMI shield to reveal the back side of the logic board. And I'm going to clean all this out as well. And you want to be careful not to touch any of those exposed electronics. They could still hold a charge. This is a CRT after all. And I was able to get the fan fully cleaned as well. And after giving that back cover a good amount of time to fully, completely dry, we are able to begin the reassembly process of our EMAC, making sure to obviously plug in that power button. After the full cleaning, the EMAC is looking almost brand new with just a few light scratches on the outside. And after giving it some very special final touches, I think this EMAC is looking almost as good as it did the day that it came out in the early to mid 2000s. Mac also sports some impressive I.O. for the time, including headphone jack, audio line in, three USB 1 ports, two Firewire 400 ports, still has a modem but an Ethernet as well, and a display out port. Now, taking a look at the specs of this machine, we are running OS X 10.3 Panther with a 1 GHz PowerPC G4 processor and 256 megabytes of SD RAM, which is expandable up to one gigabyte or two gigabytes unofficially. 
Moving into the display settings, we can see that we're comfortably running at 1024 by 768 at 89Hz. But if we want to move it down to 640, 480, uh, you can see that this monitor can actually run up to 138Hz, but this resolution is pretty unusable. So 1024 by 768 seems to be the best resolution for this. So what can you do with an Apple eMac in the year 2020? Well, starting with some very low standards, you could do some word processing, but I wouldn't recommend carrying this 50 plus pound beast to Starbucks to do that. But what a lot of people like to do is download PowerPC software and games. If they want to run something uh, PowerPC related on native PowerPC software instead of running it on a modern Mac with some kind of emulator. And a lot of people like these machines because they have a very nice flat screen CRT in them. And like I said, this was the last machine that Apple made with this CRT in it. Uh, so it, it does have a little bit of value in that sense. But just overall, these machines are fun to tinker with and upgrade. And you might be wondering, where's the CD drive? And just one click of the button on the keyboard reveals the CD drive and it retracts nicely back into that front panel with the pretty Apple logo on it. And actually, if you use your fingernail, you can actually pull this down and take a look at the specs that the machine shipped with right there on that sticker. Well guys, that about wraps up this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it was quite a bit different from the style of the first video with the $30 iMac that I baked the GPU with. Uh, I did record this on an iPhone SE and used the built-in microphone on a Retina MacBook to do the voiceover, so I'm really sorry for the quality. One of these days I might get a USB mic or something. But if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and leaving a comment below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.